Today I'm going to be showing you how to take this and this and these and turn it into these using the best tools available for the job. We got two watt cable with five sixteenths inch lugs. Let's get to it. So I wanted to show a close up of these two cable lugs here. Now they're both for two watt wire, but the one on the left is a three eight inch hole. And the one on the right is a 5 16th hole. Now the 3 8 is compatible with M10 bolts, and then the one on the right is compatible with M8 bolts. And the, you notice the hole is smaller. So this is the one we're going to use today, which is a, for 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries, generally uses an M8 bolt. The one on the left is a 3 8 which is a larger hole, which would be good for many uh, bus bars or large lithium ion phosphate batteries. Hey, sorry for the interruption, but I'm a new content creator here on YouTube and I'm trying to get my channel off the ground. So if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button right down there. And if you're into solar and off-grid stuff, why not go ahead and smash that subscribe button while you're at it? These things really help the YouTube algorithm to help others find my channel as well. Plus, being a subscriber here has its perks. For every milestone in our channel's growth, we're giving away something solar related. Watch to the end of the video to find out how you can get your hands on some cool free solar stuff. Now, back to the video. What we got here is a piece of 2 watt Windy Nation PowerFlex welding and battery cable. This is heavy duty battery cable that I highly recommend. It's probably about the best you can get on Amazon. About an eight inch piece that we're setting up today. We'll mark that at eight inches. We'll get our AMT cable cutters here. Now I bought a pair of Klein tool cutters that were almost three times the price and I sent them back because you couldn't cut the cheese with those things. These were like 20 bucks and they work great. So I, I really recommend these cable cutters. You can't beat the price on these. I do wish they had a spring-loaded uh, thing, but what do you want for 20 bucks, I guess? Get her in there, line it up, try to get it as straight as you can here. And cuts right through it like butter. Nice, clean cut, exactly what you want. Go ahead and cut us a piece of black here. We use the red piece that we cut as our uh, ruler here to mark off a piece so we know that they're even. And we'll do the same thing here, line this up. I'm leveraging the desk there to just to line it up. And we'll do it again like butter. Can't beat that for 20 bucks. So what you're gonna need to crimp one of these large two gauge wires is a heavy duty crimper. Your average crimper is not gonna cut it. Now, this is the one I got originally off of Amazon for, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks, something like that. But it's not really the one that I prefer. Uh, this one you have to, it'll work fine, but I don't like changing out these dies and finding the right size dies. Most of these that you find on Amazon are in metric. And you to figure out which size die you need takes some practice to figure out and get it just right. So I got tired of that. So I found what I believe to be the best cable crimper on the internet that you can find. This is a Timco Industrial. The only thing I do wish is that it had a case like that other one, but that's only because I have a fairly small toolbox. The beauty of this one is, is this requires no dies, and it is super easy to operate even one-handed. We can crimp these lugs. Go ahead and do that now. So the way this works is you have, you see how this part here is rounded? You want the rounded part of the, so the top part of the lug into the rounded part so that the crimp 
is going into the bottom. Just twist this up. So we get it where we can get it in there. We'll twist it back down to get it finger tight. That's holding it in there. And here's the beauty of this. Almost zero effort. Now they give you a recommended amount of pumps in the manual that comes with it, but I found you need to give it a couple of more pumps. Right, looking pretty good. To back it off, you take it out there, and you got a nice, I didn't have that completely lined up straight there, but good enough. Now, I'm pulling that with all of my might, and you just, you're just not getting that out of there. And then we're going to take a piece of shrink tube. I'm going to take this size here. I don't feel like I need that big long piece. So rather than waste it, we're going to go ahead and cut that in half. We'll save that one for the other side. You'd slide right over there. And you're right about there to the end of the, right to the edges there. And you get your heat gun out. Now, this is the kind of shrink tubing that has adhesive lining in there. These are nice and thick uh, shrink tubes, too. I, I've had quite a few cheaper ones, and it doesn't pay to try to save a dollar here, literally a dollar. These are su such better quality, especially when you're dealing with high gauge wire like this I don't mess around pay the extra dollar dollar fifty whatever it is for a whole case of these I like to do this until I start seeing the adhesive starts to come out here and there we go we got a nicely crimped end go ahead and do the other side that on there and here's where you have an opportunity the beauty of making your own cables is you can line these up like this where they're going to be flat or there's, if you were to buy an existing cable this is the only way that you can buy them pretty much but if you had a custom application or say you wanted it to go like this this is flat and this is going to go on to something that's mounted on a wall say Now, you, you, this has so much power that you could plow right all the way through this practically. So you don't want to overdo it or you're going to end up with your lug stuck inside of here. I think we could probably go two more and that's about it. Try to give it a pull, see if I see anything coming. Nope, just a... All right. Release it out of there. And you can see this has a plus thing. There's two different heads. There's another head up in here that comes out. So there's a little one with a negative side here. If that does come out, it'll make a negative imprint. But I find that it really doesn't matter. If you're going to put heat shrink on, which I would never do, not do, you can see here you can't see whether it was positive or negative. So I just use the same one for all of it. Do the same thing. Line that up.
This is a very small heat gun. It's only 600 watts. And there we go. A beautifully crimped wire. Now, obviously, we'll just do the same thing with our negative and get this hooked up. And through the magic of the internet, boom. We got a black one. So before I end this video, I thought I'd let you know that I'm giving away some pretty cool solar-related stuff for every milestone in our channel's growth. I'm a small channel that's just starting out, so I need as many likes and subscribes as I can get. So I thought, why not take some of the extra solar stuff I got laying around and pay it forward to my subscribers? So to find out what the current milestone is and what I'm giving away next, go ahead and watch this video right here, and I'll see you in the next video.